I'm Ken Rockwell with KenRockwell.com. I've had 24 hours with Sony's newest A9 Mark III. Here's a sample shot. It's a 24 megapixel camera, which is more than enough pixels for anything imaginable. Here I'm cropping in simply on a JPEG light file, the smallest file size this camera can make. And as you'll see, you can see every little bit of dust floating in the air, every detail, every stitch, pretty much everything that there is to see. Now, you can't even see much of it, even if you're watching on a 4K screen here. If you see the actual image, it's even sharper with even more detail. You can see every nuance, and you can even see every detail and every little pebble of the texture of the leather on the basketball. What makes it astounding is it has an entirely new kind of shutter, which allows it to capture every single one of its 24 megapixels at exactly the same instant. And by doing that, we no longer have any rolling shutter effects, any distortion with motion. There's no, <laughs> no limitation to flash sync. The shutter goes to an 80,000th of a second. Flash sync also goes to an 80,000th of a second. It is limited to a 16,000th in continuous mode, but you know, <laughs> big deal. The beauty of high sync speeds, for which I've always championed and we finally have them now is, is no longer you're stuck at a 250th and you have to choose a smaller aperture than you want, which means you don't get the range with the flash that you might like outdoors or using entirely too much battery power or it's taking entirely too long to recycle for fill flash outdoors for things like portraiture in, in direct sunlight. That's very important for serious photography. There's also no banding and flickering light. With modern light sources like mercury vapor, dimmed LEDs, regular LEDs, you're always having to use flicker reduction in the camera and so forth. Now, although there is flicker reduction, and it's not smart enough yet to, to change the exposure as the, <laughs> as say, maybe the light intensity value is sinusoidally, but the main thing is that you won't get banding across the image, which is really difficult or impossible to correct for when you're shooting in mixed lighting that you really don't have control on it, be in a stadium or in your own home. What's limited is, and it's the one thing we don't get in this camera is the ISO range is fairly narrow. It's only ISO 250 to ISO 25,600. You can push to 51,200, which honestly does not look that good. I'm not concerned at all about these lower high ISOs simply because if you know what you're doing, you don't need speeds above ISO 10,000 or so. If you're shooting above ISO 6400 or that range, you're probably doing something wrong and don't have enough light in your subject, or you're shooting a lens that's slower than it should be in the uh, situation. So in other words, if you're serious enough to have an A9 Mark III, you shouldn't even need speeds that high that it already provides. So that's my thought. I don't see that as a limitation at all. I find a huge advantage to not having any banding effects and flickering light and being able to sync my flash fast. You can pull to 125, but that's a limitation you get. I would much rather have the fast sync speed at 120 frames per second. It runs at 120 frames per second with full tracking autofocus and tracking auto exposure. Lots of other cameras claim to go to 120, but they don't track exposure focus. So what good are they for shooting moving subjects? If that's too fast a rate for you, you can of course shoot at the lower rate and you can program a function button, typically the C5 button here, to boost right up to the higher rates just for short bursts if you need that. So you have an easy way to control the frame rate. They have not yet put it so that you can just push the shutter button harder to get to the faster frame rate, which is something I've been pushing for for years, but give them a break. This is state of the art. The finder, as you expect, is extraordinarily good. It's got 9.4 megadots, 0.9 magnification. This lens is big enough so you can see all the edges. It's nice and sharp with a 41 degree apparent field of view. It takes CF Express Type A, and thankfully also, I don't like those expensive cards because I'm perfectly happy because I shoot still photos, not video. It'll take regular SD cards. It's got two slots. I'll take either one. Now, it is CF Express Type A, which Sony's expensive and much less common kind of CF Express. It's not CF Express Type B. Of course, it's got pre-capture, so you can set it to capture up to a second before you press the shutter. In other words, it's always capturing. And when you press the button, then it actually goes to the trouble of saving the second before you press the button. So you won't miss shots. Another slight limitation too is because it shoots at such a ridiculous rate, if you shoot at 120 frames per second, it'll only have a 192 frame burst, which is a second and a half. But on the other hand, you can do that at 14 bit raw and that's six gigabytes of data every time you press that shutter for a second or so. So that's it in a nutshell. Other than that, it's standard Sony. You guys know the drill if you're Sony shooters. And I don't think a lot of people realize how important this new shutter is because when you shoot with flash or shoot under real world lighting, it makes a huge difference in the actual quality of the pictures. Thanks again for watching Ken Rockwell and KenRockwell.com here on KenRockwell.tv. Yes, I am shooting this from New York City. We're down here at the pier. Here is the Intrepid, free at no charge in this YouTube video.